All right, welcome back to Building Freedom and to the video stock of the week. Today we're going to look at uh, HP, also known as Hewlett Packard, and uh, we're going to look a bit at the history and so on. And at the end of the video, I will try to conclude if this is a stock I would be interested in buying for my US portfolio. As always, I am looking at a number of different factors. I'm looking at the qualitative uh, fundamentals, uh, some basic numbers, uh, dividend. I know a lot of you are interested in that. Looking at what the insiders are doing, uh, is it a good value play? We're looking at some short, uh, short term uh, view and of course the technical analysis part with the price chart to see if there is enough momentum. I should also mention here that I'm not a financial advisor. So the analysis you get here is not a buy or a sell recommendation. This is my own analysis for my own portfolio. You're welcome, welcome to get inspiration or ideas but you need to make your own analysis. So the disclaimer is set. I hope that is okay with you. Very good. Let's have a look at it because um, there are happening some uh, interesting things with the, um, with the HPQ. All right, just remember here, when I say HPQ, uh, the Hewlett Packard uh, Incorporated here, that is because there's also an HPE that is also an, uh, a Hewlett Packard company, but they split up in 2014-15 uh, into uh, one division that is heading for a large corporation. And then the Hewlett Packard that I'm looking at today, which is um, mainly selling uh, PCs and printers and, and tablets and so on for a more uh, retail oriented uh, audience. Okay. So uh, if you look at the price, and that is something I normally start looking at because um, it can't be actually the price that makes me not buy the company. Because as you might know, if you have followed me in, in some more videos, I am uh, interested in companies that are moving, that are in uh, some sort of momentum. And what we can see here is that uh, from around October 19, and up until now, we have had a very good momentum in the stock. It has gone up with something like 35%. There's a reason for that, and I'll get back to that later. Um, so there, there are some fundamentals behind it that drives this. But uh, from my strategy, and maybe you have uh, seen the couple of videos I have published by now uh, with my strategy, and that is uh, under the uh, playlist on my YouTube channel here called Learn My Strategy. I need to see that the company is doing better than the overall market, which it, which it is. And we have the RSI that I use as a trend indicator here. Also above 50, which is which it is. And that means we are in green zone. It is allowed to buy this from a technical uh, point of view. However, what I also want to see is I want to see a break above a regression channel here, which we have. And then I also want to see if it is possible, some sort of retracement and a turn off again. This is what we call a kiss goodbye. And um, this could be a, a very good indication of, uh, of a further uh, upwards pressure. But um, let's have a look at some, uh, some more in-depth fundamentals so that we can see if, uh, if we find anything that supports this price development. If you haven't done already, please consider subscribing to the channel so that I can see there are some interest in these sorts of videos. Also press the thumbs up uh, like button down there and the bell notification so you'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Good. Let's get into the fundamentals. And um, what I do like is to have a look at the numbers for a start. Um, HPQ here, Hewlett Packard, uh, is a very old company and um, you might know them because uh, the HP logo is on a lot of, uh, of products. That is uh, laptops, uh, workstations, um, the printers. They have about two thirds of their uh, revenue coming from what they call personal system segment, uh, PC notebooks and so on. And then they have 36% uh, from their printing segment, uh, scanners and so on. I did say in the start that that was mostly private retail focused, but they also have some large divisions in this uh, in these two segments that are directed towards um, more industrials. But um, we can get dive a bit into that later. If we are looking at the numbers here in Stockopedia, 
Um, as you know, Stockopedia is my go-to place when I uh, need to find some fundamentals. They have a, a lot of neat features here. Um, I'm just showing you the surface here, but they have scanners and screeners and, and all sorts of stuff here. But what I do like to see is uh, the stock rank that uh, lies between 1 and 99. I like that to be above uh, 70. And this is at 99, which means that it is in uh, the absolute top of all the companies that it is compared to. Uh, we can see the quality is 92, the value is 94 and the momentum is 80. If you want to know a bit more about these rankings and so on, look into the playlist uh, called uh, My Favorite Tools, I think it is. Uh, we can, uh, I, I put some uh, videos in there about TradingView and Stockopedia that are my two favorite tools. All right. But this absolutely passes the criteria. Uh, they are all green. Uh, that is great. When we look at it down here, we can see that they have a peg ratio of 2.3. The peg is, as you might know, the um, price earning from this year divided by the expected uh, earnings per share growth. And as you can see, that growth is not huge. However, the, the price earning is not uh, big too. So we are getting an, an okay value here. We are, we are not paying a huge amount for future growth, but there's not much of it. Something that might be interesting for a lot of you, I know, is the dividend yield. And here we have 3.26. We can just uh, look at that. Um, let's see here. That is tra uh, trailing 12 months. And here we can see the dividend. Uh, that is growing quite nicely. 10%, uh, 10%. Then we had a minus of 26%. Uh, and that is a bit of a turnoff for some dividend investors. But that is simply because they had negative growth in their earnings per share this year. So I think that is a nice call to to uh, to lower the dividends, uh, to not pay money out if you have no money to pay with. But otherwise, we can see that there is a nice growth in dividend and it is estimated to continue. The dividend cover, meaning how many times can the earnings per share actually cover the dividend is also very nice. I like to see this above two. And uh, here we can see it at three uh, and it's oscillating a bit, but it's, it is in a nice range. And what that means is that if you're buying uh, a, a stock if, to get the dividends, then you would like to see that there is some future earnings that can actually pay the dividends. And here we can see that uh, even though the, the earnings per share could, uh, would drop a bit, then there would still be room to pay your dividends uh, in many years uh, into the future. Okay. We can see here that the EV to EBITDA, that is the uh, enterprise value to EBITDA, that is in a very nice range. I also like to, to see the price sales, preferably below one, but uh, between one, one and, uh, below one and a half and two is okay. But if we have it below one, then that is great. Price to keep free cash flow is also great. Return on capital, that is great. Operating margins, that is uh, quite fair as well. Um, the earnings per share is climbing steadily. Uh, what else can we see here that interests us? Um, the, uh, the net debt is, uh, has been dropping for some years and is fairly stable now. Uh, and we can also see that the interest coverage, meaning how many times the earnings can pay for their interest on the debt, uh, they are fairly well uh, covered here. If we are looking at sales growth, uh, now that is just for the uh, for, for the latest periods here, the three year compound annual growth rate in sales, in earnings per share and in dividends per share uh, is, is great. And we can see that the earnings per share, CAGR, that means uh, compound annual growth rate and the, the, uh, the dividend per share is growing at about the same range uh, over the, the last three years, meaning that we are not seeing the dividend uh, running uh, faster than the earnings per share. That could lead to some trouble at some point. We can see that the analyst con consensus is moving slightly upwards from about hold here three months ago up towards buy. So this doesn't actually look too bad, to be honest. And if you are a dividend investor, you would like to see this growing dividends that we are having here. 
Um, it, they're not growing very quickly. We're measured in, in, in dollars, but we can see in the percentage here that that can be uh, quite fair over a number of years. Okay, so we're not completely scared away here. It actually looks good and Stockopedia has it in technology. We know that. It is balanced, it is a large cap, and it is what they call a super stock. And that, that is companies that tend to do quite well in the coming years uh, on the stock exchange. So um, let's just have a look at the, uh, yeah, before we, we turn to the fast graphs, um, it has been reported and they, I think they have started it, some buyback programs. Uh, one of the reasons, and I'll get into that in, in a second, that they're talking about that is um, there's a big deal going on with Xerox trying to take over uh, Hewlett Packard here, the, the HPQ. And um, when we're looking at dividend yield, it's something I haven't talked too much about, but it can be, um, it can be, be more fair than just looking at dividend yield. Also to look at what we call the shareholder yield. And the shareholder yield is uh, the dividend yield plus um, the, the buyback yield, you could call, meaning how, how many of their own stocks they're buying back. And um, I think they have been buying some back. Uh, I don't have the numbers right here, but actually the shareholder yield is fairly high as far, far as I can tell, around eight or 9%, which is uh, even greater because some companies that have low dividend yields are spending the money, except, uh, um, instead of putting them out uh, on dividends, they are actually putting them uh, into use by buying back their own shares, which can be a, a fair use of money as well. So I normally just try and find the number of the dividend yield, which is great, but also the dividend yield plus the, the buyback yield. So that was a little detail. I'm, I'm not sure if I mentioned that before. But um, on the fast graphs here, as you know, we are looking at the uh, adjusted earnings um, compared to price and uh, PE ratio and so on. And we can see that over the last 15 years, the price has oscillated quite nicely around this blue PE ratio around seven or eight. Um, 15 years is a bit long term, so let's just have a look at it here over the last 10 years, a PE ratio of 8.8 um, .8 around that, um, blended PE 9.85, and we are also oscillating here. We have been down for a period and now moving up. We're just zooming a bit more in on the five-year scale, and here we can see that on the five-year scale, we are actually below the blue uh, normal PE ratio here, and there could be some room for moving up. We can also see that the dividend is rising quite fairly. And we can see that the adjusted earnings are estimated to go up, but as we can see, it's a 1%, 5%, 0%. It is not, uh, it is not a lot. If you want to see here in fast graphs, if, um, if, these, if these numbers are reliable, they have this little features called analyst scorecard where we can see how well the analysts have uh, have, have figured out the, the earnings for the latest years here. And uh, when it is yellow, it is somewhere between plus or minus 10% uh, of their estimates, and they have been very good at that. In 18, it actually, the company um, actually had a positive difference here, yeah, but they have been quite fair. So I think we can count on the numbers uh, for the estimates here. They are not completely wrong. What can be said here is um, it, you can, might wonder why there has been such a, a big spike in, in adjusted earnings here and now it is all flattening a bit out. And one of the reasons, because you can't say that HPQ here, they are in a fierce competition with uh, you know all the, the Lenovo, the Samsung, uh, all of these uh, producers of, of, of this hardware. But um, one of the reasons why we've had a spike in earnings here, as far as I can read, is that um, now that the Windows 10 has been uh, really been rolling out, that has been um, taking a lot of consumers, uh, I'm not sure about it, it has been taking them by surprise, but there, there has been a, a huge need for some upgrade in, in hardware. And uh, as far as I can tell from the reports from uh, Hewlett Packard, they have seen a lot of, uh, of computer shipments uh, primarily based on this uh, Windows 10 
uh, upgrade. But now that is pretty much uh, implemented and uh, that means that the growth is getting a bit more to the level where it has actually been for a while here. Okay, but as we can see over the over a five year period, uh, we can see that the price is below the, the normal PE ratio and there is a bit of uh, upwards potential here. We could also just have a quick look at the uh, EBITDA per share, which I also like to look at. Um, and the EBITDA per share, um, I'm trying to figure out if uh, we can have a, a, an EBITDA per share and then see the price oscillating around that. Are they, are they correlating? And we can see when it is getting way up too high that it, it has to come down uh, eventually. And then when it's down, it can start moving up. The, uh, the uh, earnings to EBITDA here uh, also came up. It got a bit overvalued, came down, came up and so on. It has been struggling a bit uh, on the price side here. But as you can see right now, we are also at uh, the, the same picture we, we saw just a second ago. We are a bit uh, down under here and there is there might be some room for uh, for a rise. Let's just have a look on the 10 years we are above and on the five years we are a bit below. So it, it is not a huge potential. It's not like we're coming from complete uh, cheap evaluations here, but we can try and have a look at the forecasts uh, here at the estimates. And here you can see now we're talking the price to EBITDA here. Uh, if we should move up to something like a normal range here, uh, if it's within a year, it could be a 24% uh, rise in price, uh, or this is not just price. There is uh, um, the, the cap uh, capital appreciation and it is dividends. Um, and that is a total annual uh, return on 24%. And uh, if we are going out a couple of years here, we are talking about something about 9%. So not terrible. And uh, with the good dividend and, and the rise in dividend, it could be a, a, a fair call here. Um, as you know, I like to see what if these estimates are not holding. We could over a couple of years have a little loss. Now, if we're looking at the adjusted earnings, just to make sure we're not missing anything here. Uh, also on the estimates. Um, yeah, we're looking at kind of the same numbers here. Um, yeah, not terrible numbers. It is not a huge potential gains of several hundred percent. But even though we would uh, the, the estimates would be uh, missed a bit, we would actually still come out pretty, pretty much in break even. So that is kind of a, a, a little um, safe play. I like to, to test out here to see what if the estimates are getting lower and uh, we would not be, be losing hugely on that. OK, so this is also a, a pass, uh, I must say. Uh, not a huge pass, but it is, uh, it is a, a fairly valued stock. If we're looking at the SACS platform, um, I don't know how much you know it, but SAC has its SAC rank of one to five. And as many of these companies are doing, they're trying to calculate what would have happened if you had bought companies only with SAC ranks of one or two or five. And it is uh, easy to see that the SAC, rank, SAC ranks of one and two are doing way better than four and five. And what they're measuring is how much the um, the earnings are surprising and how much the uh, the different uh, analysts are upgrading the uh, the uh, the judgment of, of the future for the company. And as you can see here, the rec broker recommendation has been dropping quickly and um, that has it has not resulted in a huge drop in price. But lately it has started to go to go up a bit. I would like to see it come up a bit further. We are down at a rating at three, which is kind of a hold. Um, so I would I would like it to see uh, see it rise up around a, a two, two and a half or so. But it is turning up and uh, it, 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 it is exciting to see if it will come up further. Um, as you can see here, the price and earnings per share surprises is also something that SAC is looking at. And you can see that uh, they have been po there have been positive surprises all over the place for the last uh, yeah, many years, actually. 
So um, maybe not huge surprises, maybe only a zero or 2.7 or 2.5, but positive surprises, that's what we like to see. And the price and consensus on this chart, we can see what the analysts are saying. And uh, this is for the 20 and 21, we are looking at um, the, the estimated uh, earnings per share. And uh, that is going up, um, has been dropping a bit, but now for both 20 and 21, the uh, estimates are actually starting to point up. So that is uh, fairly okay. Also not a complete, uh, a complete uh, no-go here. If you're looking a bit shorter term here at the uh, tip ranks, uh, we can see that they have a, a score of nine. And again, they have done a lot of research and saying these eight, nine and tens are likely to outperform in the shorter ter term. If you're looking at what gives us this nine, we can see that the analyst rating are a hold. We can just have a look quickly at the uh, front page here. And we can see that they are actually uh, estimating that in a year it will be somewhere between 18 and 24. We can look at uh, just the highest ranking analysts here. And the latest one is a buy uh, from some guy I don't know from Evercore uh, seven days ago with a price target of 24. So the most recent of them are at 24 and then we have two months ago we have some something about 18 or 20 or 21 but the, as i said the latest is a buy at 24 that is okay um we can see that the blogger opinions is bullish hedge funds are buying up tip ranks investors are a bit negative but the new sentiment is what i also like to see and here comes some interesting deals here because if you're looking at the news point here, you can see that the name Xerox is pretty much all over the place. And that is because Xerox has made uh, an offer for HBQ. And they did that in, I think it was the autumn here, somewhere around October. And that is kind of interesting because when we're looking at the price here from October, it shot up from 17 to 22 which is um, the price Xerox has offered to pay. It is a cash price of 17 and then uh, I think it is stocks for five dollars. Uh, I'm not I'm not completely sure here, but it, it, it is a mixed offer with some some shares in Xerox and some cash. And um, Hewlett Packard are simply denying this. And right now they just fight uh, with board members because uh, Xerox has been buying up a lot of stocks in, in HPQ to take it over. So right now there's this board member fight between them. You can see Xerox holding to nominate 11 independent directors to HP board here. And there's a lot of news about this. But basically, uh, Hewlett Packard is not interested in Xerox, even though uh, a lot of analysts I can find say that it would actually be quite a nice match. If some of you know the name Carl Icahn, uh, he, he's such a huge investor, a billionaire investor, um, kind of a, a hard baller. He, he's really going for the companies with all means. And as far as I can tell, he's actually both having a big stake in HPQ and in Xerox. So he's kind of playing both sides here. And um, when the Xerox came with a bit, as far as I can tell, both uh, Hewlett Packard and Xerox went up in price. And that is usually a, a sign of the investors saying that this could be a win-win. But I'm not uh, completely certain here. Not, I'm not uh, an expert on, on these acquisitions. But it is exciting to follow. And um, there might be a chance, and that could also be a, a, a bit of a play for some people, there might be a chance that Xerox are uh, increasing their bit to maybe 23 or 24, 25. Uh, and at some point, uh, Hewlett Packard might accept. And um, well, some people are playing that. I'm normally not playing this acquisition game of, of, of bits, but, um, but it's not completely unlikely that Xerox could uh, increase uh, their bit. So all in all, here we are having some, some very good uh, signs. If you're looking at the Guru uh, focus, uh, as you know, I do like to see, they're coming up with kind of the same picture here, the financial strength, the, the profitability and the valuation. It all looks uh, quite fair. 
Um, but what I do like to see is the warning signs and uh, are there some severe warning signs and they can see that the margins are dropping a bit. Um, five year decline, um, long term decline, but I can, I've actually found some more recent numbers because here we're looking at the, the long term margins are declining. But when we're looking at the recent numbers, they have actually got a bit together and the margins have started to, to go up again. So they're making more money as far as I can tell uh, on the revenue. So not terrible either. All right. I think I have said that quite a lot of times now that it is not terrible uh, and it isn't. However, is it a, a stock I would like to buy? Well, to be honest, I think that I have better uh, candidates to buy in the market right now. Um, the HPQ, the, the growth is not uh, is not too, very fast. And if, if you're looking at the fast graph here, uh, just returning to this, um, we can see that growth is pretty much, and it, well, they're not going anywhere, 1%, 5%, 0%. And even though that the estimates might be 1% higher, it is still not, it, it is not a high growth company. And uh, at a company like this, where we can see that the price has, uh, has pretty much oscillated around the, the PE line here and not around the adjusted earnings line, then I would say that it is a, a bit, maybe not overvalued, but at least fairly valued. And that is also, um, something we can see from the bit of the $22 from Xerox. So I wouldn't say that there is a huge potential. That might be five or 10% per year uh, when you combine uh, the, the, the price, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the increase in price and the dividends. So there might be uh, a, a little upside, but it's not something where I can see an upside of 20 or 30% per year. And that's kind of the upside I like to see, because if we have an upside of 20 or 30 or 50% per year, uh, and we have a momentum stock starting to go up, then uh, it is a sign to me that many of the big funds, the big investors, they have, uh, they, they have got their eye on some hidden value and they have really started to buying up. And what I see right now, of course, is a price that is going up, no doubt about that. But I also see that it is mainly because of the $22 offer uh, from Xerox. I'm, I'm not really seeing this price going hugely up from here. It can go up and we get the good dividends. So are you a pure dividend investor? And we're looking at the numbers. Well, then you get a, a, a fair a dividend uh, of uh, around three, three and a half percent, which is, which is absolutely not bad. And I don't think that the stock price will, will plummet. Of course, there can come a crisis of some sort, but I don't think the price will, will plummet uh, on, unless we see some catastrophic scenarios in the world. Uh, so you get an OK dividend and you get a great uh, dividend growth and you have a good dividend cover. So if you are a dividend investor, I don't think this is a completely a bad call. Not at all. Absolutely, you could go for it. But for me, where I do like the dividends, but I also like to see some significant potential for growth in the company. I don't really get the feeling here that Hewlett Packard is the stock for me. It is kind of a what I would call a yeah stock. It it is not it is not uh, uh, completely bad, but it's not something that in my five chair challenge or twenty chair challenge or whatever it is uh, for my portfolio, it is not something where I would take some of the good stocks I have in now that are in good trends and replace them with Hewlett Packard. That is, um, that is my judgment of the company right now. You, of course, are welcome to have a completely other opinion. And if you have, uh, you're welcome to write it underneath the video here. And I would be glad to get into a discussion because there might be things I have overlooked in the company. But uh, I think I have been pretty far around the company and uh, I haven't really seen anything that turns me on and say I must own this stock right now. Not at all. Okay, so if you have it out there, if you have it in your portfolio, well, if I had it in my portfolio, I'm not sure I would sell it right now. I would like to see if Xerox came with another offer. But honestly, 
it's a no go. Uh, it's not coming into my portfolio right now. Okay. Thank you for listening. If you haven't done already, remember that pressing the subscribe button, the like and the notification bell. And uh, I think that's about it for now. I hope you will have the most wonderful weekend. Take care of your money out there and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.